What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and this is gonna be my banner breakdown of the rearmed Marianne and Ada Dogger banner. We knew Ada Dogger was coming and also a three houses banner and I did expect Marianne to be the rearmed unit but I thought she would be a sword rearmed unit but instead she's a red tome flyer. So even though she has got blood gang here, she is gonna be functioning as a tome unit and I guess uh, it's close enough because blood gang is a magical weapon in three houses but still, it is going to be looking weird on a lot of mages. So Arcane Blood Gang does have minus one special cooldown, and it's sort of combat if the unit's HP is at or above 25%, then you get extra stats depending on 25% of foe's attack stat at sort of the combat subtracted with 4. So minimum this could be 5, and maximum this could be 14. So we have seen nowadays with the new Arcane weapons like Arcane Feldstone, Arcane Tempest, and now the Blood Gang, that they do give plus 14 to all of their stats pretty much, which is a bit of a jump from the plus 5 which older arcane weapons give. So I wish they would just retroactively update all of the older arcane weapons to give plus 14 because it's just much better. And you also get true damage including on your AoE specials. So Arcane Eclipse was also used for the AoE nuking, but this is also going to be really good as you get the true damage out of it and then it is going to be a modern weapon that gives you more stats. So overall it is going to be better than Arcane Eclipse for sure. And it also gives you 7 flat damage reduction from foe's first attacks, including the brave hits. So a lot of the arcane weapons have the pierceable damage reduction, but I believe this is the first one to give you the flat damage reduction. And 7 flat damage reduction is actually not that bad. And then you also have the null guard effect built into this weapon, and you also get special cooldown minus 1 jump before your first attack. Now even though this weapon does make it easier to AoE nuke with the true damage, it doesn't mean that you get the special jump on your AoE nuking. The special jump is only for the offensive specials in the combat. So keep that in mind if you're going to be running an AoE special on any kind of red mage. And the special jump along with the null guard does make it easier to trigger something like flare for many of the infantry mages and just in general it does make it easier to nuke. Infantry mages do have the option of time pulse echo so they could easily run that and then have flare as a one cooldown special. And then because of the special jump, you're going to be able to immediately trigger that. So I'm going to be making a full video going over the best users of this and also the builds that you could run on them. So look forward to that. And then she has got her preferred skill or preferred special in Requiem Prayer. So just like Brave Marianne, she has got a preferred special, but this preferred special actually does damage based on 40% of her resistance. So it's slightly weaker Iceberg. And then it also has the full damage reduction piercing built in the special. So that is fantastic because as a flyer you've got access to resonance. But the full damage reduction piercing is nice. And she does have really high resistance. So she's not going to be as susceptible to the scale effects um, as some of the other mages. And then it does have an interesting dragon wall built in. And this does compare your resistance with foe's resistance. And then gives you the unpierceable damage reduction depending on 4 minus your current special cooldown count value multiplied by the difference of stats and the max difference can be 10. So you can essentially get 30 to 40% damage reduction uh, based on the resistance scaling and if you have it pre-charged then you're going to be getting the max 40%. If you trigger it because of the special jump then you're going to be getting 30% damage reduction on the counter attack. So definitely not bad and then if she triggers the special in the current turn then it enables counter 2 on her, which is also amazing because if she didn't have this, she would have to run something like Emblem Seagird or run Fortress Echo, but she doesn't really have to do that. So having the fixed counter 2 out of this is nice. And then she has got an amazing dance shadow shift built in. I say shadow shift because this triggers when your canto triggers. So in your canto, you're going to be able to refresh an ally uh, with this special effect. And this is going to be once per turn. And if similar effects are active, then this skill does not trigger. So you can only run this with Shadow Trigger as the Slotsy skill. And this effect is also not treated as an assist skill, nor it is treated as a Sing or Dance skill. So again, it goes back to Shadow Shift. Shadow Shift also is not treated as an assist, despite its reposition. And neither is Marianne's Dance. So this will be enabling her to dance and refresh even a dancer. So that is going to be amazing. So this is a pretty stacked special, gives her a lot of things, gives her the full damage reduction piercing, the unpierceable damage reduction, Kanta 2, and then Shadow Shift Dance. 
So this is going to be making her an amazing refresher in something like Etherid's offense. But keep in mind that she's not going to be able to get her dance, Shadow Shift, if the enemy has got any kind of counter control. Because she's a range unit, and if the enemy triggers counter control, she's not getting any canto. She just absolutely ends her action right there. So you're not going to be able to dance any kind of unit. And that is going to be really common in the higher levels of game where you face counter control units in either its defense or in summoner duels. So you're not always going to be able to make use of Requiem Prayer consistently. And that again kind of reminds me of Bray Marianne where uh, she needs to trigger the special to refresh an ally. And here she's going to be facing that limitation of facing against counter control which is going to be uh, quite detrimental to her supportive niche. Triggering the special is not that hard with Arcane Blood Gang, but um, the refreshing part of this weapon can be a bit tricky, but still you can try and kill the counter control units first, but if they're in the backline, then it could be a bit annoying. And she does have really high resistance at base 45, so she can easily run any kind of ploy skill. And she does come with Crystalline Water in her base kit, so it is going to be making it easier for you to run that. And she does have Speed Resistance Discord as a new slot B scale. So this is going to be debuffing the enemy at start of the player phase and at start of enemy phase for minus six speed and resistance debuff and also the discord status on the foes that have less resistance than her. And then it further debuffs the speed and resistance of the enemy depending on the number of foes that are affected with the discord status in two spaces of the target. So this could go up to max 10 and then you get another round of true damage based on 15% of her resistance. So it's actually a pretty nice skill for the debuffing and also for getting some good um, in combat perks. And despite her really high resistance and crystalline water, they somehow gave her speed resistance trucks, which I guess does help her in a way because she doesn't have full null follow up or even half null follow up in her kit. So the guaranteed follow up attack out of the crux skill kind of acts as a pseudo half null follow up. But like I said, at higher investments, you of course want to run a ploy skill. We don't really have attack defense ploy, uh, which would have gone amazingly well with her slot B skill. And her slot B options are kind of limited because she already has the full damage reduction piercing, so resonance is not really going to be helpful. And she also has the Kanto in her weapon, so you don't really need any kind of trace skill. Occultist Strike and Wings of Mercy 4 for something like Aetherade's offense is pretty much what uh, you could try and run on her. And keep in mind that she is a rearmed unit and she can run the attune skills and the rearmed weapons of the other units. So this is going to be more relevant for her attune skill. So she can definitely try and run uh, Wings of Mercy Echo for Aetherade's offense and still keep her sloppy skill. So being a rearmed unit, she does have access to that. And Marianne is amazing as a unit, just doing a lot of things. But again, you'll have to watch out for counter control. That is going to be her biggest, biggest enemy. And yeah, we do have her stats, 46 base attack and 40 base speed, uh, which is not really all that much actually in the modern times. Her speed is not that high. And then we have got some other uh, new heroes from Three Houses. We've got Ash here and he somehow is a 5-star premium unit. I didn't really expect that. We recently got Fogato as well as a Green Book Cavalier, so they could have made him a Blue Book Cavalier or even a Red Book Cavalier. I think I would have liked that. And then he has got Just Bow. Amazing name for the weapon as his perfect weapon. So this gives him minus some special cooldown. So Curve Shot becomes a one cooldown special that he's easily going to be able to trigger because of the special jump in his weapon. And if he initiates any kind of combat or if there's any kind of ally in three rows or three columns centered on him, then he gets extra stats depending on five plus 15% of his visible speed. So this can easily go up to Omni plus 13 or plus 14 to all of your stats. And then he has got plus seven true damage uh, for every single attack. I feel like we don't really see this that much nowadays. We see the other scaling uh, true damage. This used to be the part of many of the older weapons. And then he also has the null guard effect built in. So he could easily trigger curved shot on the double um, if the enemy does counter attack. And he also has the full damage reduction piercing on his special triggers. And with null guard, the special jumping just like um, Rion Marianne, he's easily going to be able to trigger his curved shot and just pierce through any kind of damage reduction of the enemy. And the third paragraph in his weapon is only going to be applicable if he initiates combat. So in the player phase, he's going to be getting the minus one special cooldown jump before his first attack. And he also gets the scowl effect before foe's first attack. So again, the scowl effect is only in the player phase and scowl effect 
cannot slow down any kind of defensive special like Pavis, Aegis, Godlike Reflexes, or even a non-offensive special like Kill Force. So you're not going to be able to scale that, which does make it a bit harder against Shield Fighter armors because they're going to be running Aegis or Sacred Cowl. So you can only scale that. And in three rows and three columns, for his allies, he gives out plus four attack and speed in the combat. And if the ally initiates combat, then they also get the scale effect. Now this scale effect which he gives to his allies and the one that he has got in his weapon is same. It is only going to be working in the player phase. So this is not like Veil where you can use this to tank. That is not going to be happening because this is an unconditional scale. This is more like Hush Spectrum. So there is no resistance check here and you're going to be able to get that scale effect. So definitely worth keeping in mind this is a player phase support and not something for enemy phase tanking which still can help you in the player phase because you can not die because of the damage reduction out of curve shot and then uh, you could trigger curve shot again and do a lot of damage. So he's gonna be a decent bow cavalier but nothing really too spectacular. The special jump and null damage reduction does make him a bit more unique. Um, so we'll have to see how high his base attack is. And then he's got curve shot which we did see on Brave Bernie. So this is pretty nice defensive effect. Uh, for the archers that already have the damage reduction piercing in their kit, like Ash, So he doesn't really need to run Deadeye and Curve Shot is going to be perfect. He's got Flared Sparrow and also Sealed Speed Defense 3 and Odd Speed Wave, which is going to be kind of underrated for him because he doesn't have full null follow-up in his weapon. So if you want to double the slower enemies with the follow-up negation, then this is going to be really, really important. So it's a nice skill for him and he does come with a really nice kit and also a bit of support. And this is the Thrasir from her Abyssal map. That's why she has got 80 HP. Um, this is not the Aether Raids Thrasir. I don't think she can reach 80 HP even in her bonus season. And here you can see the scale effect uh, in action here. So he's able to trigger double curved shots, which is going to be able to do a lot of damage. And then we've got Dorothea as a uh, Demo Dancer. She is going to be a forcer focus and she is a blue infantry mage this time. So Dorothea Emblem is complete. I'm kind of surprised that a popular character like Dorothea is a demote and not Ash. It's like they switched up the places. So she's got the Vulture Tome, which is long outdated. It does have the faux penalty double effect, but this can definitely be replaced with Arcane Euphoria, which is going to be a much, much better weapon. And there are also some of the supportive uh, Blue Tomes, which you can try and run. She does have Speed Count Up 3 and also Infantry Null Follow Up 3, which is going to be fantastic because as you've seen nowadays, we don't really see many units with null follow-up in their kit. Like, even on this banner, we don't really have that on Marianne. Uh, we don't really have that on an insane unit like Ray Felix, for example. So, having Infantry Null Follow-up 3 in the uh, normal summon pool is going to be really fantastic for the value. And this can also act as a bridge fodder, so that's also decent. Um, we don't really know her stats, but I hope she has got good offenses. Unfortunately, she doesn't really have any kind of preferred sing or dance, uh, which does mean that she's not going to be standing out that much. Unfortunately, still there are a lot of the dancer skills that you could try and run. And then we have got Ada Dogger, uh, which we knew that we're going to be getting. And she's a sword infantry unit and her weapon stays the same from Tempest Trial. And she has got fantastic artwork. This is top tier. And the bird is going to be the aided accessory. So this is the closest I'm going to be getting a phoenix in Fae to match with my name. So here uh, she's going to be using Alphonse to break the obstacle and Alphonse has got the Pathfinder and funnily enough she initiates combat on attuned uh, Sida and she's kind of similar to attuned Sida with her bulk. So she has got Vidofner's Edge as her preferred weapon. This gives her minus one special cooldown. At the start of turn, if there is any kind of ally in three rows or three columns centered on her, then she gives herself and those allies in that three row and three column range the plus six speed and attack buff and also the null follow up status. So again, like I said, null follow up is useful because we're seeing it less and less on these kinds of units uh, like Brave Felix. So it is a good thing to have. And this is not like infantry null follow up. This could be used to give null follow up to any kind of ally no matter their movement so it's a decent support and if she initiates combat or if there's any kind of ally in that three row and three column range then she's able to get plus 14 to all of her stats she also has null penalties built in so she doesn't really care about any kind of debuffs which is nice 
because we have a lot of them going around and also the ploy skills and she also has the null guard built in and this is like the null guard banner basically all of them have null guard except for uh, Dorothea and then she also gets true damage based on the highest total buffs of herself and the allies in three rows and three columns so this could go up to max uh, no, I shouldn't say max but in most scenarios uh, idly up to like 24 true damage which is definitely not bad and then she has got flat damage reduction based on 50% of X and flat damage reduction against specials so the first flat damage reduction is only against the first attack of the enemy and then the other flat damage reduction is against the special triggers so she's kind of reminiscent of a tune seed in that kind of way uh, with that flat damage reduction so this can roughly give you like 12 flat damage reduction both on the first attack and then on the special trigger of the enemy which is going to be making her quite bulky actually and she can run skills like gust for example or godlike reflexes to just have even more unpierceable damage reduction and then she has got reposition gate and this is going to be an inheritable skill unfortunately this is not going to be inheritable to cavaliers or flyers as they have officially confirmed that on their twitter account which is definitely one of the first i think so reposition gate is likely going to be a 400 sp assist skill for arena usage and it's just going to be a huge thing for arena because without reposition gate you'll be stuck running the rally skills and unless you have any kind of dancer or legendary chrome or something like that it is going to be really hard to have any kind of uh, movement utility so this does help you this is going to be giving the unit who uses the assist skill uh the canto one so it does help with the retreating um, but this is only Kanta 1 and it can be a bit awkward at times because of the reposition and I don't know why they decided to uh, make this only infantry and armor exclusive skill because cavalry and flying units would have absolutely loved to get this and aided dagger is an aided unit so she's gonna be disappearing from a barracks if you fodder her so I wish they would just make aided units also not disappear like attuned and rearmed units so definitely keep that in mind and then she has got attack speed excel which again gives you flat damage reduction on top of her weapon and then she's got vidofner's wing so that is the name of her bird i think so it has got the innate pathfinder now even though this pathfinder is stated with the brackets it's not the status effect this is the innate pathfinder there is nothing you can do to get rid of this pathfinder on dogger there's no schism status no duo thorpe button which could you know get rid of this but the pathfinder that she gives to her support ally or to the highest defense ally can be uh you know erased uh with stuff like duo thor so it is going to be the visible pathfinder status kind of similar to what we see on uh dogger with her weapon refine and also on wind tribe dogger uh, but regular dogger is used a lot more so this is going to be of course really helpful in summer duels and also in ether raids offense and now also in ether raids defense because this is going to be given to any kind of ally with the highest defense so you could plan your ether raids defense team and then uh, at sort of the enemy phase of a team <laughs> you're going to be giving the pathfinder to the highest defense unit and that could catch people off guard so definitely something you'll have to keep in mind and then at sort of combat if her hp is at or above 25 percent then she inflicts penalty on the enemy's attack speed and defense by minus five and she's got the in combat panic as well so we have seen this before on reversal weapons so that is pretty much the in combat panic which actually is really helpful uh, for tanking because a lot of units do have the visible buffs that they cannot turn off uh, i mean dagger is one of them she gives out the visible buffs like that and it also has 50 percent damage reduction piercing built in and it heals up seven hp after the combat so aided dagger is going to be a lot more tanky because of her flat damage reduction she also has firm canto curb which is an upgraded version of counter control this is going to be stopping any kind of end turn action skills of duo leon and also uh Sather's. so this can be helpful but it is not often needed over canto control 3 especially if you're a free to player but still good to see this on another unit um, outside of a seasonal banner we definitely need a counter control 3 uh, demo unit i mean we do have it in the divine codes but i feel like it's not enough um then again counter control is gonna be pretty annoying for Rion marianne who's on this banner so here attune sita is not able to kill her and docker is actually gonna be pretty bulky so she can function as an omni tank as a melee frontliner 
and she can also uh, provide a lot of support with the Pathfinder status and also the Null Follow-Up status, so it does help even the modern units that do not come with it. And yeah, Aid's Ascent is just underwhelming, honestly. But yeah, the bird is gonna be amazing. It's kind of small. I wish it was the big bird. But why does why does the bird get nerfed when <laughs> we recruit Tiger? It's like the same thing like in anime and games where you recruit a super powerful boss and they're just, you know, nerfed when you use them yourself. So yeah, that's a bit disappointing. Look at that bird. It's so big on Tiger. I guess there is some kind of limitation of that. But yeah, pretty excited for that aided accessory. Uh, Nidhogger might be appearing in next month's banner, and so is going to be Larother. And we are going to be facing Dagger again in the story chapter. So this banner is going to be lasting for a while. It does have two sparks, and we're going to be having Caspar as the instant demote unit. He's not going to be getting given away in any kind of quest, so you'll have to use your luck and summon him if you are trying to plus and merge him. But he is an infantry unit, so he's going to be having that high HP. I hope that he's able to have a preferred weapon, but I don't think I have that big of a hope as Dorothea didn't really get it, so I don't think an instant emote is going to be getting it. And we also have Methody as the Grand Hero Battle Unit. A lot of people might forget who he is, but he's, you know, just the NPC assassin that appears in certain chapters. But yeah, he's kind of forgettable. He's probably going to be a dagger unit. He might be a Kronia 2.0. I hope they give him a preferred weapon and not just a generic weapon. And I guess the biggest thing going for him is the fact that he has got the same voice actor as Joshua and Neil Morgan. So I think that's the thing which he's most popular for. So you can look forward to his info tomorrow. And this banner is honestly not that insane. It's kind of skippable, uh, which is good to have every now and again. But that doesn't mean that these units are not strong. Uh, Dagger is especially definitely the star of the banner. And Marianne is also unique with her dance. Um, if she was not weak to counter control, I think I would have said that she would be a lot, a lot better. Uh, but unfortunately, that is the reality. And I want to thank all of my two members for their constant support. And you can click the link on your screen right now to check out my breakdown of this month's weapon refines. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Ash's scowl effect in the enemy phase. So that's all. See you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.